So again, I, I went by Gabby to write Barbados. So when uh -huh. I got it, I said, Gabby, I want a little piece. Before I could not run twice, Gabby had, <laughs> Gabby had to say to me that. <laughs> Mr. DJ, you in control. Let the music play, play, play. We gonna dance and sway, let me sweat my head till the break of day. Hi, this is Ian Allen, and you're tuned to Behind the Rhythm. Hey guys, my name is Randy Eastmond, music producer, musician, and music educator from the beautiful island of Barbados. Welcome to my channel, and you are watching Behind the Rhythm. So, you may be asking, what is this all about? Well, on this show, you get a chance to meet the producers from Barbados and the Caribbean responsible for creating the music that you love. We take a look into their creative space and thought processes. We break down and unpack the elements of the music produced by our guests over the years. They share their tricks, techniques, and approaches in the world of music production. So, if you are new to creating music or you just want to see how these guys approach it, then you are in the right place. If you want to stay up to date with the new videos coming in this series and to check out our new content, just hit the subscribe button below and turn on the notifications. If you like what we're doing, hit the like button as well. Okay, let's get started and meet today's guest. Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Rhythm, yet another episode. We are so happy that you are here. And today I have a fantastic musician who's going to be featured, a singer, songwriter, guitar player, and he is going to break down on Pat one of his popular songs that he has produced during his time and i'm not even gonna waste any more time man i think i should just bring him in his name is ian Aline. ian where are you my brother come on into the chat hey bro i'm here master hug it ian Aline, aka hug it everybody knows him as hug it fantastic musician he's had the opportunity to play with a lot of international artists um i believe you would have toured with eddie grant as well right right ian Tour yeah toured with eddie grant correct you know toured with rochford toured with desiree perfect perfect you know and and your discography of work is known throughout barbados and the caribbean and we want to thank you for your service you know how have you been holding up in this in this covid time you know well, well you i've been keeping busy in the studio because there's no live stuff happening right now so right right most right, of my right. stuff has been in the studio yeah that's that's understood that's understood you know um so any any projects any works that you, you got oh well, yeah mind? um i'm about to release another track re-release i should say mm -hmm. um it's coming out, it's going to be available on iTunes and Spotify and all those on the 19th of this month. Right. It's a song called Soka Wine. But I'm also nice. working on some new stuff. I'm in the process nice. of producing a few tunes. Different genres as well, not just uh, Soka. You know? And where, where can people find you on social media if they wanted to, to check you out and check out your music? A social media, I'm, I'm actually on IG as yeah. Bajan Ian. Bajan Ian. Ian, Ian, correct. Bajan Ian, yes. So uh, you want know, Instagram guys, check him out. Insta Ian. Instagram and, and, and Twitter and all those. Those are yeah. Bajan Ian. I'm also on Facebook. Asmin Ram is actually on Facebook as well. Okay, it's cool. My cool. studio. So I want you to tell us five unknown facts about Ian Aline. One, I have written for some people that you would not even think I've written for mm -hmm. as far as uh, artists in Barbados. Right. Um, I'm really cool. <laughs> I said that in another interview. <laughs> but that's, that's I, cool. said, I, said, <laughs> I said that in another interview. So I thought I'd, I'd use that again. Right, um, that. Mm -hmm. That's um, two. I, I listen to real music. I mean, when I say real music, real music. I got 11,000 tunes on my... I still have my iPod. I had 11,000 mm -hmm. tunes when I stopped using it. Right. So that's the music I was listening to every day, like on shuffle. Mm -hmm. Music is really very important to me. Um, I like writing. Mm-hmm. Bicycle ride is not most of right, it. and I fancy. And um, <laughs> and last one for you. Thing? Um, I like roast bread fruit. And oh, everybody yeah. knows that. Sorry, everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a little known fact. <laughs> I, I love a, roast bread fruit. You not love like, roast bread fruit. Love that's roast bread and that's a Beijing yeah. thing, of course. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. So, guys, today we have the great musician, guitar player, producer, songwriter, and recently vocalist. Um, Ian had a fantastic year in 2019 with a beautiful song, you know. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back behind the rhythm and we're going to start to unpack the beat and get to understand how this great mind put that song together and the elements that, com that comprise that song. So we're going to be back. We're going to take a break. Right, Ian, so you know behind the rhythm we feature songs produced by our guests and of course i have to ask you 
what song are you gonna break down for us and 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 unpack for the audience of Behind the Rhythm? Well, I think it'd be fitting to do the, the first song I did in my new studio, uh-huh. and that is that is uh, so happy. So happy. That's the one from the from 2019. You went from 2019. So came right. so came out at semifinals, etc. Right? Finals came fourth in the finals, man. Come yeah, on. yeah. I remember that <laughs> playing the band? I totally enjoyed. Correct, that. correct, yeah, correct. Yeah, correct, for correct, sure. Correct, um, correct. So tell us how the song came to came to be in. You know, were you the writer of the song? Did someone write it for you? Or did someone co write? Did you build the music first and then you wrote on the rhythm? How how did the song come to be in? Okay. First of all, why I did the song would be because I had just finished the studio. The right. studio was now up and ready to roll. Mm-hmm. So I thought, let me let me do a couple of songs that, so people understand that I'm out and ready to roll again. Because right. I had a studio before, if you remember. Yeah, correct. And um, so I decided I'm going to do a Raga Soka. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll do a, a social comedy. Because I really have a soft spot for social comedy. Right. So I started doing it. I did a few grooves. And then this mm-hmm. one, and then I, when I listen back. You know, you do a few things and then come back in the studio and listen. It's okay, I'm going to roll this one. Mm-hmm. And that's how um, so happy started. But the, I, the way I write, yeah. I do all the music first. First, ah, and then okay. the, then then the music tells me what I'm gonna write. About. What you're gonna write about? Yeah, that's, so what, that's obviously the vibe was this happy vibe. As yes, Soka, of for course, sure. You know, for dance sure. feeling, sure. dance music. Awesome, for awesome, sure. awesome. But I I'm really interested to understand the elements that make up this song. And we are in Azra Mam Studios with Ian Hoggy Aline. And the song that he's featuring is one of his singles, a song called So Happy. At this time, Ian, I'm going to hand over to you so that our viewers can get an understanding of how you created this song, how you put together the elements. This is Unpacking the Beat on Behind the Rhythm. Over to you, Ian Aline. Explain to us what made this song so sweet. Well, like I said, I usually start with drums, yeah? So, Mm -hmm. um, let's just solo the drums here. So you have... Yeah, that's like a that's like the vibe of of the whole um, the whole track. Like I want to go with, with a happy vibe, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we started with the, with the, with the, uh, the drums and percussion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Percussion. Maybe hear it sound like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, no, I, I beat, I beat, I, I did all of them. You scratch. played live? Whoa. Yeah, I played live. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, started like that, yeah? See that there? Nice. At what tempo is this, though? 115, I think it was, yes. 150, nice. And you played you played all the drum all the drum parts and everything no actually i got um t rare from cover drive to play the roles with the fills yeah right okay but all the other drums i i i i, uh, I did my drums in in um reason nice i use reason yeah so that's that's basically the groove there yeah you know they want to get a dance so. yeah and what i would then go on to do when I got drums that I like with the guitars. Mm-hmm. Can you play the guitars alone if you mute the drums and then we bring those in there? Yeah, 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 sure. Guitar strum, yeah. Yeah, nice. guitar strum. Mm-hmm. And obviously you're a guitar player, so you know, I know how that strum yeah. it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, and how how long did it take for you to choose the type of strum you use? Because that's another consideration. You know, there's so again, many options. Yeah, exactly. But again, the drums kind of dictated to me what would fill mm-hmm. the spaces that are, are there. You know. Yeah. And um, like most of my recordings, I asked Nicholas Branker. Because we have a, we have a, we have a, we understand each other musically. Right. But that's so Branker there. Branker played the best, nice. Yeah, and what Branker did, he gave me a few ideas. Uh-huh. He gave me a few ideas, right? And then what I had to do was then produce it. In the sense mm-hmm. that, okay, we could go this way, we could go that way. All ways that we could go on. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But then I put it together in a way like, okay, this is how we're going to go. 
the All final right, part nice. is what you heard, but right. he actually did give me options, you know, on how to go. Again, those are decisions that I tell people, you know, the producers make because you probably would have had like three or four options, as you said. Yeah, but had yeah. to listen through to them and then choose which ones fit the particular. Correct, track. because if you don't produce a track, you end up with seven thousand tracks. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah. every, every if, if you're gonna listen to everybody, everybody has an idea. Let's try this. You yeah. got that. Let's try this. You know, so you got, at some point you have to say, I want to try to go this way. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? It's not that any the bad ideas or anything. When you choose a path and you, and you go with all right. the elements that, that, that go that way with you. So, so what else you have added after that? After the guitar and the bass? After the guitar, we had some keys. Nicholas made some keys as well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get the keys here. Oh, now that. That's that's mm-hmm. the beginning of the song, right? Oh, that's the tag. That's that's the signature that's, of the song. Yeah. How no. can we forget that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the signature yeah. of the song we have so many stories about that to get in anyhow but yeah that didn't come at the beginning though okay as you know sometimes we just have like a four beat but mm-hmm. but 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 and then we start the drums yeah but i said nah i don't want the sound to just start like that mm-hmm. so i just was fooling around and fooling around and then that came right it didn't come clean the first time mm-hmm. it was like a mistake and i was yeah. like no 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 wait, i like this so so i just cleaned it up and played it correctly played it correctly right which happens a lot of times a lot of great things come from mistakes you go like oh but if i had played that well it would sound like this (laughs) so you just play you just play like that you know so that's how it started this is yeah play it again nice that's the signature man yeah so you were saying um nicholas would have played some keys so Nicholas has some keys as well as Barman. So all those keys you heard, those those, mm. those are that lush lush pad you hear in there. That's right. Barman from from like, again from Covered Right. Covered Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up to Barman. Keys, yeah, man. Barman is top man. Yeah. So yeah. So so we got so right now we got keys, we got guitar, bass, and drums. Can you solo the keys so we can hear? Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Um, keys. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. See where you're going? Yeah. Yeah. Gotta have an art hit yeah. in Soka, boy. He's yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> got to have that art hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right, so what, what other elements do you have? That we can look at so background vocals mm-hmm. and uh, you would you would know that i work with betty now we, yeah. we do a live thing mm-hmm. so i got betty uh betty griffith pain man and obviously i double that with her so we got yeah mm-hmm. so you got now we got a choir you so let me let me ask you in terms of the backing vocals like per harmony how many tracks did you do because that's another thing that we, we consider when product in production um two per I harmony use... Yeah, I do two for harmony. Right. Pans. It can be oh. pan depending on the on the song, it can be pan in different ways. You can mm-hmm. go all hard, all left, or all left, all right, sorry. Right. Or you can go, you know, nine and three. Yeah. Depends on the song, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um so we we got this high mix up kind of way. So it sounds like different people when it's only two people. Right. You know? So right, right, right. we got three harmonies and she does two of each. I got mm-hmm. three and I do three of each as well. Two of each as well. So did you give her the freedom to arrange where the harmony the, the backing vocals would fall or were you instrumental in, in that in that composition of i actually song? did my parts first so she right. just doubled me basically okay okay nice. so she nice. would octave me kind of thing yeah you know? yeah, yeah 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 so yeah so so that gives you that you know that mm-hmm. um rear reason mm-hmm. it gives you that choir kind of kind of vibe you know right mm-hmm. so you have that something like this nice you know what I mean? How, how is that process for you? I mean, you being the producer, you being mm-hmm. the arranger, mm-hmm. and still the vocalist, and still being creative in terms of how you deliver the lyrics that you write. You know, how how is yeah. that process for you? Um, I don't force it. This, this is how I operate. Mm-hmm. I had this music for a while, you know, mm-hmm. and then I had like six different tracks. So there's six different things with, and I name them all. I don't know how you do yours because, mm-hmm. like, I write this way. I don't have a name of a song yet. 
Right. So I would put just a name, some some weird name. I can't yeah. remember the name for this one. This was kind mm. of something weird. Right. But let me tell you something about that vocal there before we, before I forget. Mm. See that whoa 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 whoa. I had I had a whoa. I had a kind of a that kind of vibe too. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't that exactly. So <laughs> when I got to that point, I said, "Let me check bag and see what bag is say." But you know, you gotta use your friends. I mean, correct. Bag correct. bag and the hit after hit after hit. <laughs> of course. So, and he just lived up the road. So yeah. I tell you, when you come down, pass with me. Right. And he heard my war, my war, war. It was a kind of a war, which kind of vibe too. Mm-hmm. He said, nah, 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 try this one. Mm-hmm. And this is the one I did go there. Well, unfortunately, I think I got rid of the, the one that <laughs> I, I had before. Originally, okay. It would have been good that you hear that one too. It wasn't bad, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't yes. this, if you understand uh, what I'm saying. Again, people playing a part in the process and bringing the song to what it is, you know, that. Correct, correct, yeah, correct. That's all correct. part of it. Yeah, man, yeah. So that's what we got the war, war. Mm-hmm. But um, you had to ask me a question there about the oh yeah how you how, how do all the different parts yeah okay like i said um so I, when i got to the point where i'm actually writing a song now mm-hmm. even even a name i had i had a, i had a name a happy when i had the lyrics written down i hadn't had a name it but so happy mm-hmm. was in it okay. and when he heard when he heard so happy he said name it that but he wanted to be he wanted to be that kind of place name mm-hmm. it that I didn't have a name. I had all the lyrics. I had all the chords and everything. Everything went, but I did mm. not have a name. But I mean, the name is the la- not, name is not that important yet yeah. at this mm-hmm. point. Yeah. You're trying to get the song done. Mm-hmm. So when you get the name, then that's fine. You, get, right. you got the finished part. So mm-hmm. he kind of was instrumentally getting the name too. But in the breakdown now, mm-hmm. I said one of the breakdown. But what are you going to do with this breakdown? <laughs> For some reason, it wasn't coming to me. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> everything has came, but this year. So again, I, I went by Gabby to write Barbados. So uh-huh. then I got it. It's a Gabby one, a little piece. Before I could let run twice, Gabby had, <laughs> Gabby had this with me, but <laughs> oh my goodness. Gabby sent back um, the piece, I mean, what, 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 what do you guys in England call the middle eight? Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The middle eight. Um, Mr. DJ, you in control. Let the music play, play, play. We gon' dance and swell and we sweat right here till the break of day. This is walk up time, this is hole and grind, this is waste to waste. waste, waste, waste. This is what you call party animal in the place. Now here, I, I call Gabby. Mm-hmm. When I check my phone, I see Gabby got a voice note. That was what Gabby said to me. <laughs> I mean, eight Something bars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Eight bars, but it made a difference. It made a difference. Mm-hmm. It took me song from, from the A part to the B part, but now we're going down the... End, yeah, you know what I mean, and I can see from the session. Obviously, you pulled out a lot of instruments, and it's probably a, a later. Yeah, 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 point, yeah, 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 yeah. We took out yeah. most of these, most of these stuff. I mean, if we, if we play, we, we just we just play the way it is there. Here. Out. Right. Yeah. Bass drum out. Bass out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Rhythm guitar out. Yeah. You know, you give it, you give it some air, air to breathe. Yeah, yeah, give it a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you come in on one, Back in. two, three. Back in the chorus. Beautiful. Yeah. Man. Loving it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That, yeah. That's how that went. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, um, I was asking you earlier, um, in terms of filling all of the roles, because if you were mm-hmm. producing for someone else, you would have been making the decisions on the recording technique, the Correct. approach, the treatment to the song. But mm-hmm. know your artist. Your yeah. writer, composer, producer. Uh, how yeah. how was that for you? That process was it was it more taxing? You know, did it take a greater toll on you in that regard? Well, actually, no. Because before, when I had the studio before, when I did songs for like Nat- Natalie and Ray Gay and Clark mm-hmm. and all those guys, yeah, everything was just me. Mm-hmm. It was just me. But this time around, I'm working with Sean Lane. Right. So when I want to do a vocal now, I'm gonna do the vocal right. I'm gonna let him produce mm-hmm. the vocal most of the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would just go and sing. I take right. that out. I am not producing the vocal. Right. Record. So you step up, step up the I mean, producer's role. I know what I want, mm-hmm. but he still will be hearing it. It's the second ear. Right. So even I may be saying something that, like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. you got two ears now, but two sets of ears. I should yeah. say. <laughs> 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 I'm hoping he uses both ears like right. me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we're using, when it comes to vocals, I always call Sean in mm-hmm. to track my vocal now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I get I think I get a better vocal. Now. I mean, the ones were horrible. Yeah. But I think I get a better vocal. Now. So I just and concentrate on singing. You know. Well, that, that's amazing. We I don't have to show. worry about pressing record or anything. Yeah. I'm just singing. 
yeah. we had Sean featured on on uh, episode one of Behind the mm-hmm. Rhythm. So there's another thing that I would want people to understand a part of the process that people may not understand. After you've done all of this, this note has to go to someone else. And I'm going to make the assumption that Sean Lynn did the mix on the track. The mix yeah, engineer now takes over, right? Correct. And the mixing Correct. engineer does all the balancing, the treatment, mm-hmm. EQ, processing, whatever needs to be done to make this song radio ready. So this is another part of the process, people, that you know you may not be aware of. Yes, the production is done. Yes, the arrangement is done within the studio, but we have to pass it on to someone else. As Ian said, fresh ears, another pair of ears mm-hmm. who are gonna who will bring a different perspective to the track Correct. and the final product. Right. And and as a as a producer, you can still you can still you still have input. But I'm mm-hmm. saying there's certain technical things yeah. that you hand over. They deal with that EQs yeah. and, and that compression and those kind of things. Yeah. Is, it, and then you better. can decide. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then you can decide. Okay, you're gonna take out this and you can label that, and you can yeah. have this kind of delay for here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. But as far as the technical side of how mm-hmm. you treat bass, how you treat drums, mm-hmm. and so on, you mm-hmm. leave that to to the Correct. engineer. Too. Yeah. But I want to ask you another question, Ian. Um, Given your years of experience, you're you're someone that I would have grown up watching as a youngster playing, then having the opportunity to play with you as well. That you know, that was an amazing right. feeling, you know, and knowing that I had the opportunity to to play with someone who I watched as a youngster. What advice would you give to producers getting into the game, um, in terms of them understanding what is required and the steps they need to take to get to the level that that you're at? I think. Make yourself familiar with live music is very important. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be able to play, right? Right. That's not that's not that's not the records of, of a producer. Because a lot of the producers that we checked when we were mm-hmm. growing up, they weren't players. Yeah. I mean, there's some that like Maurice White was a player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you had other guys, the guys who produced Rolling Stones, but they weren't players. Yeah. But they could hear where it's supposed to sound like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when they tell you it's supposed to sound like X, you as a musician knows you have to work out what that means as yes. musically <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like i said fat mm-hmm. you, you know what i mean yeah it needs some it needs some it needs some ear it needs yeah. some you know what i mean those kind you of things you have to understand yeah what you have to mean. understand where, where they're coming from yeah mm-hmm. but um i i and you know, harmony too mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of the productions i hear you know there's a very linear mm-hmm. they are not bass they, they, mm-hmm. there's no real harmony going on right. you know mm-hmm. you have the same note repeated in the bass in the middle and then mm-hmm. top, you know what I mean? Right. So mm-hmm. harmony gives your song more depth. If you, if you listen to the rock people, they never lost that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, rock has changed a lot, yeah? Right. But it's still it's still harmony. It's still yeah. harmony based, you know? That's fantastic advice. And, you know, I, my advice to them also is to understand the business of it first because the music is one thing, but you also need to understand the business of, um, well, the business associated with music production and the and you know, getting music to the public domain because if you don't understand that, you could run yourself in some trouble yeah, in, definitely, years, to, in definitely. years to come, you know? Definitely. So people because see... You, the, oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, because you can take up music and listen to it, it yeah. doesn't mean it's yours, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you got to be careful. you got to keep it on those lines as well. You hear something and you you copy it. Mm-hmm. It's not yours to copy either. Yeah. You know, you got to get permission for all these things. Exactly. So if a lot of people run into trouble like that. Yeah. People see the buttons and all the fancy equipment. Think, well, I got to get into that. But I really advise that you understand the business of music first. Yeah, the business is very important. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. This is behind the rhythm, and we are with Ian Aline inside of his studio. We were unpacking the beat of his song "So Happy," and right now we're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back to the segment called "On This Spot," and we're gonna give Ian five minutes to build a beat or build a rhythm, whatever you know, and. That's going to be promised. That's promised to be very exciting. So make sure you tune in. Make sure you come back. We're going to take a break now. See you soon. Hey folks, welcome back to Behind the Rhythm. And we are in the segment called On the Spot. And this in this segment. We're going to challenge Ian Hoggett Aline to build a rhythm, build a beat in five minutes. You ready for this challenge, Ian? I'm going to give it a try, man. I know that try will be fantastic. All right. So I'm going to give you a countdown to your start, but are you ready? In five, okay, let's go. four, three, two, one, go. Okay. You just start with drums. So let's start with the drums. Mm-hmm. The snare. Uh, 
as the um, call that the sparker. <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes on the clock. I'll be grooving. Nice. All right. Am I going for the axe, boy? Trouble no. Sorry. Trouble. No. <laughs> Let's just get this one. Here we go again. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. Mm -hmm. We got three minutes on the clock. Going for the foundation now, boy. Yeah. But the man that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get the bass? Yeah, man. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Let's try this one. One minute, 40 seconds left on the clock. We got one minute left on the clock. Okay, we got time, man. <laughs> Chris, you got time. One minute left. <laughs> what do we do here now, right? Uh, So we count it down in 10, 9, yeah. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's your time, Ian. So what you want you to do, um, just play it back for us. Let's hear. And you can sing those little things over again. And then we get a feel for what it was. Wow. 
I love it, yeah. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love it. Nice. I love it. Yeah, man. <laughs> wow, wow. I love that. I love that. You gotta do something with this, Ian, for sure. You gotta you gotta work on this and structure this and build up something with this, yeah? Actually, I was listening to it and hearing something like a world beat kind of vibes, cassava right. kind of vibe, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you see, man. It's a recording, so you got it there. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. All right. Wow, yeah. guys, on the spot. What what a segment just now. Thank you, Ian, for sharing that with us. You know, that that was some those some beautiful car progressions. I really enjoyed those. And thank you for sharing with us today on Behind the Rhythm, on Packing the Beat. Uh, we really appreciate the knowledge that you shared, um, your insight, and having the chance to to be in your space in your studio at Asramam Productions. And a lot of takeaways today in terms of your approach to the song, So Happy. And then we saw you in your element, how you would you would create your, your music and what's not. I really want to thank you for that and the opportunity to be in your space. Thanks for having me. It's really was my pleasure, man. Anytime. No problem. I also... I also want to say thank you to Mr. Shamar Coombs, who is our technical coordinator. He's the person making the contacts with the producers and ensuring that we have all the technical protocols in place to ensure that this behind the rhythm is possible. So thank you, Shamar. And to you, the viewers, thank you so much for being with us. This is episode number three, and we are totally enjoying it thus far. Um, if you want to be notified about what's going on and, and future episodes in this series, just hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification button below. And we look forward to seeing you for future episodes. This has been Behind the Rhythm, and we are out.